one of the most successful Singaporean radio hosts. This is Sonia Chu. Welcome to the show. Welcome. I've never actually talked about this on any show. What was it like when Jeremy then met Joakim for the first time? Joakim and I made this mistake. <gasps> oh. What was your biggest wake up call? This is your daily catch up. Okay, so here with us today is one of the most successful Singaporean radio hosts and TV personalities. You are familiar with her voice, but did you also know that she has hosted multiple shows on YouTube, including a two-time award-winning travel hey. series, open a restaurant, and is an avid snowboarder in her spare time. This is Sonia Chu. Welcome to the show! Welcome! <laughs> You're an avid snowboarder, I did not know. <laughs> okay, this one. I'm not sure wow. if avid is the right, right word. Right, right. Okay, That's what I said on your profile online. I, <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this? <laughs> My manager. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I like to snowboard. It doesn't mean that I'm excellent at right, it. Right. You're not bad at it. I am not, I'm not terrible. Like, yeah. I'll live. That's why yeah. you wear the ski goggle, is it? You have to wear the ski go. Oh, you mean this one? Oh no, this is this one. Throw shade later. Throw shade. Throw shade. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, obviously, based on the intro that I just did, right? You are quite a busy woman. Yeah. So tell us, where are your eye bags? Um, you know, I I hide them away. Yeah, they are. You know, I hide your them skincare away. routine is like the number one question. <sighs> What? Yeah. Like, For I mean, real? I've seen you do a few interviews about it. Oh, you it. mean some people like ask like our listeners and stuff. A lot of people it. like, uh, so our real office is upstairs. Okay, okay. <laughs> our this is upstairs. also our office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then when I ask like our female colleagues, right, is there anything you want to ask Sonia? Yeah. Then they're, they're asking skincare. Skincare. Like they say your what? face is snatched. Oh, thank you. It is, it is I am nice. so honored. Thanks. <laughs> Actually, I do have a couple of secrets anyone can do. And my makeup artist knows this. Like every time I have shoots or like, you know, ad right. ads to shoot, whatever, right? Can you drop um, one? Prior to her or well it's I have two makeup artists prior to them actually doing my makeup I have a routine of doing kwasha sha on my face like I'll massage for like five minutes I'll use the, the kwasha sha thing to massage and like roll my face Whoa, and then no for me. real you have to do it you already look like that though no 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 but that helps like it helps the circulation <laughs> it helps the circulation I promise you do it before you do your makeup and you will not regret it wait like, am I you will see what's a what's a kwa sha what <laughs> Okay, if you had to guess, what is it? Like a like a roller? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, close enough. Okay. Not really. She was being generous. <laughs> you can close just call enough. Close scraper. enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a variation to, of like the jet roller. Yeah, oh. to get the okay, circulation okay. going, you know, in your face. And a random fact: I actually slept at almost four a.m. last night, and I woke up at eight. So cannot like, tell. I had to yeah. I had to roll the crap out of my face this morning. John looks infinitely more tired than you. <laughs> <laughs> and he slept eight hours. Yeah, I woke up <laughs> but speaking of sleeping at four, you actually most of the time would wake up at four because yes. almost all your life you've been doing morning radio shows, right? Uh, Do yeah. you prefer that? Uh, fun fact, I asked for it. Um, oh. I was doing the evenings for a little while yeah. and it was quite challenging because as you know, we're not just radio DJs. We don't just sit there, talk for four hours and okay, bye. Like we're going to go off now, live our best lives. <laughs> we, <laughs> okay, can, can we join? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really so much more than that, right? We have other shoots, filming, mm. meetings, Things, mm. guys, as you guys yeah. know, you know the media is not just about what you see on on TV or what you see on digital. There's so much work behind it. Mm. And when I was in the evenings, I did have a lot of difficulty managing my other jobs. So other events that I had to do, right. had to host. Like clients will always be requesting for that specific time because it's around like six, seven p.m. Right, after right. after everybody else's work. Ends yeah, really so cool. it was very hard because I didn't want to disappoint them as well. And right. yeah, but I, I found a way to manage it with mm. that time belt. But at the same time, I thought after a few years being in that time belt, I needed to come back to the mornings and free up my day, you know? So it was about time for a shuffle anyway. Your day schedule is actually very similar to a Grab driver then. Hey, thank you so much. They work very hard and I respect them. No, they have a lot of stamina together. as well. Afternoon, nobody. Then after that, the evening, <laughs> they come back again. And I also don't really have holidays. Like oh. public holidays, weekends, like yeah. the lines are blurred. Yeah. When, when you go for these meetings and these shoots, are these yeah. considered some form of a side hustle? Or do you actually have it planned by your company? It is, okay. It is a bit of a mixture. Like it is somewhat how much you want to hustle out there. Yeah. Because we have our day jobs mm -hmm. and then how much we want to do outside of our day job is really up to us. Right. Um, it is coordinated by my manager who helps me to manage my scheduling. Yeah. Because if not, I'm going to be all over the place. I'm mm. like, 
I'm terribly disorganized. I have to tell you this. Mm. <laughs> like, I, high chance I would have forgotten to come here if it wasn't placed oh. in my calendar. Okay, okay. <laughs> but okay. this is facts. Like, it's the truth. And you know, I'm grateful to have someone to really help me organize my time because that is one of my weak points. Mm. I will say. Right. Um. Yeah. Which means if if you wanted or if you just started and no one's booking you for gigs and stuff, yeah, yeah. it is a four hour job. It can be lah. It can be, but I think you have to use the time outside of the four hours to. Because I was once there, obviously. Mm. You have to use the time that you have outside of that to build your brand mm. and mm. to do things that might expose you. Like, I don't know, I was trying to attend every event out there, small yeah. or big. You know, I wasn't really invited to the big events at the point. And I think also like crashing some parties, trying to meet people, like, you know, just, hey, I'm Sonia from 987, you don't know me yet, but if you want to give me a chance, like, you know, right. please, yeah. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, of so course, brave. that's the hustle, man. That's the, the network. Hustle. Nah. Yeah. The network, yeah, 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 the network. Hey, apparently we met each other Louder. when we were kids. I yes. don't remember. Huh? No, but we were too young already, too young already. Yeah, our, I didn't remember that. We didn't really hang out, I think, but our parents were friends. Yeah, oh. and they actually just met up recently. Oh. Yeah, so cute eh. My yeah. parents just recently sent they me- They sent us a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they were church friends, right? And yeah. then if I'm not wrong, um, I asked you for your mom's number so I can send my mom because my mom- Yes, yes, yes. Or something yes, like yes. that. Yeah, no, then, we, we, we reconnected because of some work, work thing. Mm. And then we realized like, hey, no, I think our parents kind of know each other and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they met up and they had their own catch up without yeah. us. <laughs> 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 they all catch up without us. Yeah. I also know that you were a, a frolic kid. girl. I was frolic girl. Yeah. Uh, well, if you're Gen Z and younger, you don't know what frolic is. Okay, oh, it doesn't shit. matter. That's a name I haven't heard in oh, you know, ages. Yeah, Have you, do you know what frolic is? It <laughs> was a froyo, frozen yogurt shop. That's but all they only hire, say. but they only hire pretty girls. It's like, oh, he's like, I don't call me oh, and okay, bitch. Okay, but yogurt. Okay. It was the female equivalent of New Urban Male. You it is But I don't know what happened to them now. <laughs> like I don't know what happened to Frolic. They just kind of folded. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I have Frolic no clue. Nice. Yeah. Not even, you know, it's just huh? the ice cream itself was good. Yeah, we had skills, you know, like yeah, it's yeah, all in yeah. the wrist. It's all in the wrist. I see, I see, I see. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that could also be a skincare tip. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All in the wrist movements. So how you actually became a radio DJ was based on a competition called Radio Star. Yeah. And back then, was this a dream that you always wanted? Mm. No, actually, mm. I never, I never really thought about being a radio presenter, but a radio you go DJ. join the competition. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> like, let me get to that, let okay, me get to okay. that. So I always wanted to be a writer. Like I wanted to be a journalist. Like everything that I did in poly was uh. related to journalism, wow. writing. Mm. I mean, there was one radio module, but it wasn't really like my main focus. And I just joined the radio station in campus to have a CCA, uh -huh. to be honest. Like that could have me um, in campus, on campus as, as uh, little as possible. Right. So I don't have to yeah. like commit to but like you were training. On air, I was on air, like okay. Okay. campus Ooh. radio, yeah, you know, yeah. not really. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it was a great way to also learn a little bit about the systems and stuff, which you will realize is quite similar oh. to what we use. It's like a smaller, more simplified version. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I met a lot of cool people there too. But uh, I never thought of it as like a real job job, you know, when I was approached for the talent scouting, um, it was actually just something I thought I could do on the weekend, like part time. Like, oh, maybe I'll just right. like, oh, weekend shift, you know, like I'll go in on Saturday morning or, or something. Stand in when they MC yeah, or stand what? in. Yeah. Yeah. Then, like, I'll have like a main job somewhere. Yeah. Was this like your current voice? Has yeah. it always been your voice? <laughs> yeah. Did, did you train like, it? Or not? That was the first question I asked you. Yeah. Really? Okay. Because we talked to the Martins and they said, like, everybody, like, kind of gets to find their radio voice when right, they learn to speak right, right. from deeper and then yeah, enunciate yeah. and all that. They said six yeah. months. But this is how I speak in real life. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I don't think my voice was always like that, I would say. Probably got a bit deeper over the years, I think. So it's not too late for me. It's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me if I'm speaking from my diaphragm or whatever that is? Um, Am I? Sounds like, it, it, it sounds like throat voice. It, okay. <laughs> sounds like a throat voice. <laughs> Actually, most people speak from their throats and you're not right. really conscious about it. But the, the thing is, let me ask you, if you use your voice constantly for like a few days on end and you're constantly talking, do you lose your voice easily? No. No? No. No, then that's yeah, okay. I lost my voice last week, la, but you know, it was like <laughs> many years later. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. If you're constantly getting sore and losing your yeah. voice a lot after like much filming or projections, mm. you're probably using your voice Maybe wrong. because they talk for like four hours and I go. That, that is true. And then we also it's project true. for events. You know what I realized was that they actually speak for very short sprints only. Like I was so afraid of <laughs> over speaking because you don't know. Then they know. have to cut you off. Yeah, and, and like Justin was just like, 
like the moment I end whatever story that I was saying, right? Yeah. Then Justin will be like, we'll be right back. Then he just go already. Yeah. And then adds our songs. So then right. I start thinking, was he waiting for me to stop talking this whole time? Probably. <laughs> or was it just that? So was everyone driving? Well played. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, all right. Where's my face? Nine, face? <laughs> 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 oh, shit. <laughs> okay, so you started radio in 2012 and then yeah. two years later was when you first got paired up with Joakim to start the wake up call. Yeah. Mm. So, no, this is crazy for me because Right, right in 2014, on the way to school, you in primary school, school is it secondary okay, four? Okay, thank goodness. Mm. <laughs> no, that's the show I listen to every single morning. Yeah. Oh my oh. gosh, so we were terrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we were but horrible yeah. back then. So but we wouldn't know, like, to be honest. Mm. It was just y'all were two young people because before that, the OGs were at that time were probably Bobby the Muttons. Yeah, and, Muttons, yeah, yeah. Bobby and Ross. And uh, flying du- Glenn and the Flying Dutchman. Yeah, mm. that's even one So they were very much older yeah. people besides Ross. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. So when you and Joe Kim came along, yeah. it was like fun, fun people. Yeah. Oh, okay, people. Okay. Yeah. okay, so maybe from yeah. your perspective, because you all were around like the same yeah. same era, you're like, oh, okay, you're more forgiving. But, I don't know <laughs> if the, but the people who have been tuning in to like the seniors, seniors, sorry, the OGs. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, lucky I not mean, life. the more senior DJs. This ah. is a live show. The, the more <laughs> senior <laughs> DJs. Hint, hint, Martin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are very young at heart. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think maybe they would be a bit more discerning about mm. what they want to consume. Right. right. What, what's, what's your equivalent of a radio mistake though? Besides like swearing, we've which I don't done, think happens. We've had many mistakes for <laughs> sure. Like for sure. And swearing, I don't want to jinx it. Swearing isn't... <laughs> It's not one of them yet. Ah, <laughs> Other DJs have done that. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's quite common. I mean, come on, like, you know. No, it happens. that's not what the button said. It happens. They oh. said if he's never used that button before. The s- oh, the, dump, the delay. The swear delay. Button. I've yeah. never had to use that either. <laughs> uh, but sometimes when you have guests, you really got to brief them mm. like before. Oh, yeah. So it's not yeah. them, it's the, it's the guests. Guest that no, but, but there have been DJs that made mistakes where they right. maybe they recorded something with a swear word and they didn't right. delete it. What was your biggest oopsie on air then? Wow. So this one, I remember Joachim and I made this mistake quite <laughs> early in our career when we were paired up together. We did not fact check. So we saw this article, but okay, to be fair, it was a CNA article, okay? Right. That was uh, circulated online. So there was a lot of resharing on mm. like Facebook and Twitter at that time. And we were like, oh, so many people are sharing it. It must be current. And they were talking about like prices raising for a, a specific telco. Right. Okay. Mm. What we didn't realize was that this article was actually outdated. Right. But the people sharing it didn't realize it as well. Because, you know, one person share, five people share, mm. 10 people, 100 people share. And then some influencers started sharing it too and like complaining oh. about it there and then without actually clicking into the article and realized uh. that it was actually one year ago. So we made the rookie mistake of also sharing that story on air, mm. not checking the fine print <laughs> and realizing it was a year ago. And oh my God, like the client heard it. Oh, and they complained. As to in, the, the high telco heavens. was your client at that point. Uh, not in that current moment, but they have had like right, contracts. Right, right, yeah, right, right, they right, had. Right. Yeah, they okay, had. Okay, okay. Yeah, contracts with them before, so they were tuning in. Someone there tuned oh, in, and no. they heard it, and they were furious because <gasps> you know we just spread out yeah. like fake news to you yeah, know yeah, hundreds yeah. of thousands of people, and so they demanded some form of compensation. Oh. Um, I think we almost got fined. Actually, we almost mm. got fined, but the compensation bit were you know we also had to physically go down and host a couple of events, uh, FOC huh? for them. Oh, yeah, I what they really milked us. Yeah. 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 We wanted to go do <laughs> for you. The two we people that spread fake news about. <laughs> Them are hosting on TV. <laughs> <laughs> right? We actually, and it was in their building somehow. How interesting. Right. So we were like, wow, this is really interesting. But you know, we just shut up and do it because we know we messed up. Yeah, yeah. Like we know right. we messed it's up. It's a and very light course, sentence already. We apologize as well. And mm. I think we ran a couple of like ads for them, you know, on, on the show. And we, we really apologize. And since then, we've been so vigilant about it. I mean, hey, yeah. sometimes you need a, like, a mistake like that to realize that you really cannot take it for granted. You can't just right. like pull a freaking article off Instagram <laughs> that you see or something or TikTok and mm. be like, okay, just report it on, yeah, on yeah, yeah. It's not, not gonna happen. You gotta fact check first. Mm. The trauma is so real. Every time like you guys see an article now, like check the date, check another article. You know like, what? I don't even order. consume news on social media anymore mm. for on-air purposes, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> right. Just in case. I always go straight to the source. Like I'm never going yeah, on yeah. social media again. That's a good again. thing for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. 
That's the, that's the thing, yeah. No, we use Reddit and TikTok. <laughs> Good thing. Five yeah. years ago, things are still relevant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, it is true. Speaking of like uh, Joakim and, and the muttons as well, when yep. we had them on, we found out from them, actually quite shockingly to some of us, yeah. is that uh, quite a lot of their radio career wasn't actually determined by them. It's determined by management or like this big boss. Right. right. I wanted to find out like how much is that true for you and for mm. ventures like your podcast, for example, how much was that something that you wanted to do or was that something that you were told to do? Like they will see who is suitable to pair up with who and then they'll try and make it happen. Right. But as you can tell, not all partnerships work out. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes they don't even like each other. And I always wondered, you know, what would happen if Joakim and I hated each other. <laughs> and I think in the beginning, we did have a few run-ins where we were not sure whether we'll work out. <laughs> but we tried uh. our best and it did help that we kind of knew each other before that. But mm. I don't know whether it mm. we, we don't know whether yeah. we to mm-hmm. yeah, since like, we're there. We got on each other's nerves in the beginning. Oh, right. We did, we did, oh. we did. But I'm grateful that we actually trashed it out. Mm. Right. Like we just talked it out. You right. know? And and there are certain things that if we didn't do back then yeah. and didn't iron out, then probably we won't be here right now. Yeah, because there are partnerships that fail and they just mm. break off. Well, what oh, was it about joking that annoyed yeah. you? Let's, <laughs> let's see, let's compare notes. Okay, um, well, he's definitely going to watch this video 100%. And I don't think no, he's going to- No, joking, joking, please yeah. come on. He's, <laughs> he's definitely going to watch this. So I think in the beginning, there were a lot of struggles, like power struggle almost in that oh. sense. Because, okay, both of us were very new at the time. Both of us yes. were very new. Um, I, In fact, he's been in the media industry longer than I, because, you know, he Singapore was from Singapore Idol, Idol and mm. then he did some TV appearances. He hosted a lot of, a lot of right. programs at the time. So I was very rookie in that in that sense. But I had a little bit more experience with the technical side. Like, mm. you know, the, the, the panels, the, yeah. I've had more practice. Right. Mm. From so, the CCA? <clears throat> from somewhat, a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. <laughs> and I covered every show I could. Like, anytime any DJ couldn't make it, I'm like, okay, I'm free. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, so I got a little bit more practice. You know, I, I knew the systems a little bit better. And and I think at that point when we started the morning show, the power struggle came with like, okay, do we call it Sonia and Joakim or Joakim and Sonia? Oh. Right. Do we call it, so do you we, won lah. Because he's Sonia <laughs> Joakim, right? <laughs> Actually, I just think it sounds better because like Joakim, like it's more like, it sounds- It's hard. Yeah. Your mouth closed. Yeah, 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 your mouth closed. Yeah, 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 instead of Joakim and Sonia. Uh-uh. Uh, and then like, uh, I see, like, I see, I it's see. It's like open-ended question, you know uh. what I mean? Like, so it just sounded better. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. In that sense, and I think um, when it came to who's going to be on the panel as well, it was initially like my boss's decision to be like, okay, it's not going to be on the panel because you've been doing this a little bit longer. I mean, not that much longer, but I had a bit more practice. Mm. So the but, panel is in who will manage yeah, the systems, who, Yeah, la. because the thing is, whoever is on the panel mm. also determines how the show sounds like. Oh, because a lot of it is like how I, you know, how you edit, how yep. you, you know how you are more sleek or what is your style? Like, I don't know right, how to describe right. this, but you know, everyone has a unique style. And mm. I'm sure if you ask any DJ that's on panels, even Justin, mm. he has his own style mm. and, and speed of editing or choice of editing and all that. Sorry, you say editing. Yeah. Why do you say editing? What do you mean? Like, you like are, audio. You are cooking on live? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, Wait, hold up. What do you mean? What do you mean? So every time we take phone calls or like do anything that's live elements, we have to edit them. Yeah, hey, okay, there's, there's a delay. So, so I record a call. Uh-huh. I can't just air the call yeah. live because they correct, might just correct. go up and like swear and say all kinds of shit, right? Yeah. And I can't control it, you know? So we have to edit them. So I have maybe I like see. three minutes to edit. Um, oh, so you are doing that as well. Yes. Oh. Then who's doing it? I mean, no, 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 I will still another person. A yeah. producer. Yeah. Yeah. Who's doing it? Hey, before that, I'm a producer and presenter. That is my core. Like yeah, yeah. skill. That's so stressed. You're like hosting a live show. You have to speak, you have to edit. Oh. Yeah. And then I someone nowadays, the song's only two minutes long. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God, I tell you. And it's the music director's fault as we learn. <laughs> it's, I swear, now it, the songs are getting shorter and shorter. Yesterday, Stress. I listened to something on Spotify that was only one minute long. Oh my gosh. But like lyrics and all, it's not, it wasn't instrumental. Anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but can't you all just take turns on the panel? You can't because it would change the way your show sounds. Oh. Okay. It so would change like, the way your show sounds. For like these last few years, since you got paired up, it's always yeah. been you on the panel. Yes. So Joakim just, he's just coasting lah. Hey, hey, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that, no. Actually, he also- When he comes, he's like, fuck us, good one, yeah. What do you, you do to air his episode? 
Damn bad. Damn bad. We sit down here and take all the insults, then we don't air it. Damn bad. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, while it may seem like the co DJ is just relaxing, actually, he's not relaxing, lah. Okay, like, so what's he doing? doing? He's doing. <laughs> <laughs> What does he he do? supports me with a lot of research, like oh. on certain articles, you know, certain he's things. The book. Yeah, he's yes, he's dropped the book. <laughs> <laughs> no way. And and he also assists me with like uh, collecting details from the listeners who are like right. calling through. I can't oh. do all of that. That's like too much. So while he does that, which is also very important, mm. I'm like editing the call. He's your assistant, lah. Okay, okay. <laughs> 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 I didn't say it. He's my co-host. Okay, equal, equal, equal. He never yeah. researched the CNN article properly. Yeah. Oh. oh. Other than that, at the beginning, I'm wondering whether it was awkward. Yeah. Because years ago, mm. you had actually gone on a singular date. A singular date. Mm. Once. Yes. Shout out to Jeremy. You are not forgotten in this People conversation. People love to ask about this, 100%. No, we're not. We're, yeah. we're going for a different yeah. line of questions. We're not asking really what you think we want us to ask. So, okay, go. What we are curious about is does Joakim have game? <laughs> not, like, how come not he never even just then. Like, even now, when <laughs> you see the way you all meet new people together. Right, right. Do you think uh, Joakim has game? Actually, I think he does. I think he does. I think that, and he knows that he can be a little socially awkward. But right. when <laughs> you, we have, he has people around him that makes him feel more comfortable like myself or mm. like his friends yeah, then right. he'll be a bit more chill. Right. If he's by himself, mm. maybe he won't be as quick to warm up. <laughs> right. He's single. Hit him up. Yeah, like, guy. Uh, hit him up. Somebody date him. <laughs> no, so, anybody. Anybody. <laughs> okay, but I mean, there has been quite a bit of public speculation about your relationship with him, whether or not you're actually secretly <sighs> dead in the background or that, think right? People wish lah. I don't know why also. So what I'm wondering is how has this actually affected like both of you in your personal lives, right? right? Trying to build your own relationships. It is not the easiest thing to strike a balance, especially when you spend so much time with this person of the opposite sex. Mm, mm. And I did address this before uh, when some people said, do you, do you think like your partners will get jealous of mm. joke, like your radio partner, like mm. the people that you're dating? Uh, the answer is yes. There have actually been some guys that I've dated that were not very comfortable with joking. Yeah. Oh. And, and I can guess that conversation also. It's like, like Sonia, it's not that I don't trust you. Yeah. I don't trust you. <laughs> it's more of like, oh, you already see each other every day. Why must you like go out with him to do yeah, this yeah, yeah. or to do that? And then. Right. Oh. Sometimes we like, oh, we have to go movie premieres or like we do attend events and then mm. we get to see things first together, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and these sometimes are the things that you want to experience with your romantic partner, mm. right? Uh, but I think at that time, it was also a question of maturity because I think the partner that I was with at the time wasn't really understanding of the situation because I have to attend these things as work yeah. right. and as appearances with Joakim. If I had a choice, I'm sure I would have wanted to ask my plus one to come with me or he might have wanted to get a date to go with him to watch, I don't know, the Avengers for the first time or the premiere or, you know, attend these things, experience these things together. Yeah. But currently, I'm glad to say that uh, Jeremy, he's definitely more mature in thinking and he doesn't see that as like, oh, okay, I'm going to get upset just because you, you're you spending extra time with Joakim like mm. outside of work. He understands that it's purely work work. Do you think you put in extra effort to try to get your partners to become friends with Joakim? I think it's important for them to be friends. Mm. Like it's, it's interesting because this whole radio partner thing, like it's like a marriage, you know? Like you mm. die also yeah, have to yeah. see this person every day. <laughs> Like really, and you have to make it work. Like whether you're having a bad day, whether That's you're true. pissed off with this person, whether we had a conflict during the show or something, which we actually hardly do. So that's yeah, very difficult, lah. I would imagine. Yeah, it's <laughs> hard. Like you gotta see this it's person. Mostly like you fight your eyes on your. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we were irritated. We like give each other a minute. Then we're like, oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay, 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 okay. Like then we just so move on. What was it like when Jeremy then met Joakim for the first time? I think they get along. That's great because I don't have to. I don't know, pander and explain and be like, mm. you know, please understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he just really gets it. Important. Yeah, so yeah. speaking of Jeremy, yes. you guys have been dating for quite a few years mm -hmm. now. And interestingly, you actually met on a singles cruise. Yes. Can you tell us that story? Not as a participant. You are a host and- <laughs> Just wait, to clarify. Was he not participating? He wasn't. Oh. Why was he there? He wasn't participating. So he was just lurking. If not, I thought it was like, oh. So oh. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know how you all met until Denise was briefing us okay, on the okay. story. Then I was like, Ah, uh -huh, yeah. the pay on this one. Yeah. Uh, I did the host, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <Good goals. laughs> yeah. I yeah, I attended as a host, and it was like four days, three nights, right? So I begged, I begged my girlfriend to come with me 
my one of my best friends because I like, please don't leave me alone on this cruise. <laughs> I don't know like who I'm gonna talk to. Like please, you know. It's just filled with singles. She's like, all right, free holiday for her. She came, and he, Jeremy, was actually volunteering uh, for his friend's company, who was the events company. Oh. Like she ran the events company. Like he was the waiter. Like he was the crew. Like he would help to move stuff. Interesting. Like, right. Yeah. Right. Like, so so he you know was single at the time and just you know chilling and his friend was like hey come and meet some new people lah. like you know just free holiday kind of mm. on a cruise mm. and uh, all you got to do is help me carry some banners and stuff and like set up and they're mm. close friends from childhood so oh. he was like yeah sure okay so he wore the events shirt and everything and that's how we met <laughs> we met during the fire drill we met during the fire, fire drill. drill yeah during the fire so drill so instant spark no that? it wasn't an inst- instant spark it wasn't. In fact, when we met and he stood behind me, like I think he tells this story better than me actually. Hey, uh, sir, he, <laughs> what are you doing next Monday? <laughs> <laughs> he literally went like that. He tapped me and he was like, oh, you must be the DJ. That was his opening line. Ah, uh, no game. Wow. Yeah. Oh. And then immediately, my friend, like my friend that was on the cruise with me, she was like that. <laughs> <laughs> she was standing behind him. She was like, <laughs> wow. But the conversation was not too bad, I guess. So oh. better be damn good lah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> to redeem himself and more lah. Wow. Was the age gap ever apparent to you in your conversations? Because at that time, I mean, st- now still he's like more than 10 years older than you, yeah, right? The yeah. same gap. Yeah. It's the same gap. The gap wasn't close. You wouldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah, so was there ever a point where you felt that age gap? You know, your first thought you might think is, oh, like uh, perhaps the age gap comes across in like, oh, maybe I like to party a lot or he doesn't. Or, Okay, those are very superficial things. Mm. And I think we worked through that. Like mm. we found a balance because he's already done with the like partying, the going out and all that. So he just wants to do more meaningful things. He doesn't mind going out once in a while, but not all the time. Mm. And I think for my friends and I, when we go out, we go out. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, we really go out. So sometimes it's a bit tiring for him. Yeah. And uh, at, at times he's like, can we call it like earlier? But we're like, ah, 6 a.m. Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh so initially it started off as those differences. Mm. But I think more so moving forward, right? It, it was more of like mindset and it was more of lifestyle. And I learned a lot from him actually. I think I developed a much more stable lifestyle because of him. Right. He's a good influence on me. Mm. Like I don't like to exercise. I don't really eat health. Didn't really eat healthy. Didn't have a great lifestyle. But I think it's improving <laughs> as we go along. Like I'm, I'm adopting the good habits from him. <laughs> nice. Like for sure. So in in that sense, um, we don't have that much of a, a mental age gap. Right. If right. You know what okay. I mean. But when the relationship was kind of getting more serious, right? Yeah. yeah. Were your friends and family like okay with it? They, you know, I'm very close to my parents, so mm. I share everything with them. And uh, actually, the funny story is right after the cruise weekend, when we disembarked, he actually met my dad. Oh, It was an accident. It wasn't intentional. No, but how does it, he know? So my dad came to pick me up from the cruise. Right. From the oh, cruise so cute. Yeah, yeah my, pa- okay, my parents, uh, parents are the cutest. Cute. Yeah, yeah they, really would, they would insist. They're like, no. as yeah. much as I'm like, them paise, right? I don't want like, my parents pick me up. I'm a grown adult. Oh, my dad's going to pick me up. You know, that kind of thing. But, but I appreciate it. It's so sweet. I don't mind a yeah. free ride back. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so my dad came to pick me up. I think he was early. So he went, came down to get a coffee nearby or something. And just so happened, I disembarked. Mm. And so did... Jeremy. So mm. he he disembarked behind me. He, we weren't even walking together. He always behind you. Uh? Like, yeah. Ah! He waited for you at the door. La, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> and when I got to the, the exit, the gantry, I turned around, he was there and he was exiting. So I said bye. And my dad was like, who's that? Oh. <laughs> he was like, my dad quite scary you on last time. He's like, who's that? And I was like, oh, nothing. <laughs> it's just like someone. And he was like, oh, someone. <laughs> Is it someone? Mm. That's such a suspicious answer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you like really la, you catch feels really but la by I, then. I, I was very sure at the time because I wasn't intending to get into a relationship. Mm. Right. Yeah, I had just gotten out of one and I was like, I'm going to be single and just like, <laughs> chill, live life. <laughs> no, but then what changed things? Mm. What changed things? To make you want to pursue something more romantic with him. I wasn't sure yet at that time. Like mm. we had a great conversation, honestly. And nothing just, else just happened. Just on the cruise. Yeah, on the cruise, we had a great okay. conversation. We, we talked oh. actually the last night that we were uh, on the ship everybody had like a closing party. There was like a big closing party and everyone kind of partied till like 2, 3 a.m. We ended up talking till about like 4 a.m. while they were all wow. just finishing drinks right. and everything. We ended up talking for another hour. It's like, that was a 
that was very memorable for me because I don't remember the last time I had such a great conversation, conversation wow. with someone. Wow. I felt like there's something there, but I didn't want to rush it. So eventually, like who made the first move? He asked me out for lunch, but I thought that was a bit of a lousy way to ask me out. Like who asked you out for lunch? Like I feel yeah. like lunch is kind of casual. Friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Friendly. Think, That's when you, you yeah, think like, it's a high risk move so yes. that there's an out after. Like, oh, I got to go back to work, sorry. Exactly. And he works in the CBD. So I was like, ah. Oh, Maybe he's not really into me, I thought. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. felt that. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm not gonna feel too much about this. Like I'm just gonna take it easy, casual. But I'm gonna try to make him meet me for dinner. Oh, oh, so oh, I, yeah. I manipulated okay. the situation so to sick. meet me for dinner instead. Good move. Wow. So I just said I'm not free for lunch at all for this entire week. <laughs> for, forever. <laughs> but it's like, oh, in general, dinner is better for me. Do you think he caught the hint? Oh. Like then know. after that, I did he become ask- more like forthcoming for sure like after the first date yeah. like I think he couldn't resist my great personality yeah, 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 yeah. but we then met more after that yeah 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 oh but he had to like overcome so many hurdles a bad first line asking <laughs> for a line yeah, so wearing the event tea <laughs> but he met the even, father I didn't even get, uh, get to one more hurdle before our first date official dinner date uh. Um, remember the whole lunch thing, all mm-hmm. that, right? But prior to it becoming dinner, I was actually in the CBD for another meeting with a client. And we were chatting at the time, like just on text. And then I said, oh, hey, like I'm actually around the CBD. And he was like, oh, I'm actually out on, on a break right now. Like I'm going to get coffee. Do you want to grab a coffee? It was mm. very impromptu. Mm. And so I was like, yeah, sure, okay. His friend caught wind of it. I think he went to tell his boys chat. Like, he said, <laughs> hey, like I'm going, I'm like meeting her for a coffee. I don't know. And one of his guy friends crashed our coffee date. <gasps> Boom! Yeah. No, I think he didn't do the boys chat. He didn't do the boys chat. He wanted to like, I guess, capo and see who, what's up, mm. you know? Yeah, they were like, oh, this person, like, who is this? So he kind of like casually, oh, uh, I'm around the area too. And he crashed our coffee. <gasps> so that was another hurdle. I was like, did he ask his friend to come? Yeah. Did you clarify this with him after? I didn't. Actually, I didn't. Well, you must have really liked him. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. He got game la. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that he got game. Maybe you think he, he invited the friend on purpose yeah. to make, to leave you wanting more. Nagging. Exactly. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's three steps. Okay, maybe he do the bad first like on purpose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Cannot oh. be like this guy trying to hit on me. Yeah. It's a he wore the event tee because he's trying to suss out whether you're a gold digger. Uh, <laughs> Which I'm not. Which you're not. <laughs> Pass. I'm not. Wow, this wow. guy. 40 really? chess. Wow. Okay, although, okay. although when the news came out, people called me a gold digger anyway. So. Right. Yeah, but it is see, what it is. Uh, now everybody knows so she's doing very well. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yes. you. So you did mention earlier that you feel like Jeremy has helped you like mature quite a bit, right? And yes. I do think that there is that general sentiment amongst women mm. that they prefer not to date younger guys because they think that they are more immature. Hmm. So in your personal experience, right, how true do you think that is? I've never dated a younger guy. But would you? Sure. This guy three years younger. Ooh. Well, three years isn't that big of a gap, I feel, True. at this stage of life. If you're saying like, I'm I'm in the workforce <laughs> and he, I'm dating someone who's like in NS or something, uh. maybe the difference might feel larger. Mm. Like, cause the phase mm. in life is different. Personally, yeah. because I feel like I grew up really fast, working at a very young age, like starting mm. work really early mm. when I was in school. Mm. So I did have to grow up a lot faster. Like some parts of me still immature in some ways. Like, you know, I may still do like crazy stuff or stupid things, but I just never felt like I would vibe with someone younger than me because mm. I needed somebody who was in the same phase as me in life. It's, it's not necessarily about age, it's yeah. about the phase, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm. And for Jeremy, it's just so happened that he is a little bit much older. Yeah. So you did move in with Jeremy for a period of time. I'm not sure whether you guys are still staying together now. What was it? What was that conversation like? Because right. was that a big step for you guys? You know, the funny thing was we never had an official conversation about like, oh, I want you to move in with me. Like, you know, it's over romanticized in like Hollywood movies and all that. They give you the key or whatever. Uh. Um, firstly, no, it was a digital lock. So it's not, <laughs> there's no physical key. It was like a passcode. Please stand there and you scan yeah, your face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was more, it was quite natural because it happened more during COVID. Right. And because of my work and everything, like I had so much that I had to do. Like I needed the space. I needed to be closer to work because we worked through COVID. Like mm. we didn't have like work right. from home situations and all that. And I also had to set up like a, a little mic and a light and everything at home for like streaming and all that. So Jeremy offered a spot in his place and he was like, I think it would be good for you to be able to do this. So I was mm. like, okay. So it was more of that. It was a very easy transition. Right. And I think it was also a good way to see how we live together as mm. individuals. This is the first time that I've stayed with someone. 
for such a long period of time. Was that something that you had to work out like with the whole living situation? <laughs> Honestly, I think he has to work it out more because I'm very messy. Oh. So he has more to accept than I do. I've heard a lot about your locker. <laughs> I feel very <laughs> messy because, yeah, like I am messy, but I think he has grown accustomed to my messiness. Tolerated it. Yeah, he's tolerated it. Um, he must really love me. I don't know. No, but, but is it organized? Like, if I ask you to find a specific thing right now, you yeah. can find it. I may go through some chaos to find it, oh, but okay, I will find okay. it. So you're genuinely find, messy. I'm genuinely messy. Do you think that privacy became an issue? Because I'm not sure, like between couples, right? I think people need varying degrees of privacy in their own relationship. Some people don't share yes. their phone password even. Mm. So mm. what is that like between you and Jeremy? How did you all work that out? It was pretty easy for us. Also, shortly after my house was ready, so mm. I do live by myself actually. No. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I do. I live by myself. Oh, oh. yeah. Then you so, I know. I know. So, so hard that's for him. Yeah. No, 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 no. So he sometimes stays at my place, right. and then I will stay at his place. So we just have an even. Why? Even it's time. like having two homes. Yeah. No, because you see, I bought it when I was single. Yeah. Mm. So I didn't know that I was going to meet him. Yeah. You see, mm. and I still wanted the experience of. Living alone, by alone and mm. in a place that I I worked very hard for, right? And yeah. designed, you know, together mm. with my dad, and and I wanted to still have that experience of living there. Right. But do you think he might find it difficult to broach the subject of, like, say, for example, asking you to move back in? Okay, the thing Ooh. is, we never use the words "move back in" or "move out." Like, we never use that word. You stayed over oh, okay. and then <laughs> never went home. Then never go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think in the future, if we move to words like. You know, settling down, mm. we'll, we'll have that. We actually talked about it a little bit, so we'll see, uh, that, we'll, see, yeah, we'll see where that goes. I just didn't want to be the annoying relative. I knew us. you were going to say it. Uh, yeah. yeah. no, yeah. I know, yeah. I refuse. There. But you, if you want, you can ask. Something that I thought was quite interesting when you had Jeremy on your Men Explain show yes, yeah. was that you guys talked about when you argue, right? Yeah. You all do talk to your friends about what you all argue about, and sometimes it might be quite immediately after. After the fight happens, and for us, right, I think we struggle with that also because Why? we share private conversations uh, that we've had with our partners on the show as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So mm. I'm just wondering, like, how you navigate, like, how do you not <laughs> overshare, right? But you need that constructive opinion, Because right? sometimes I'm just not thinking rationally. No, it's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I always yeah. overshare with my friends. <laughs> I don't know whether guys or men feel like it's a like female thing. Like, do we share a lot more? I have no idea. But I think for him, his conversations with his friends about this particular, you know, like topic, right? It's very short. No, when, when guys speak, it's the summarized version. This is- the, No, see, that's why you get the shit advice. But <laughs> you get the <laughs> summarized it's advice true. also. It's true. <laughs> How oh. to navigate it? Uh? I it's, mean- It's them tough. It's them I tough. think there's a dissonance yeah. between like, what, what, your ex, what your expect your partners to be talking to their yeah. friends about. Right. Because like, I don't, talk to anybody when Ben and I fight. Oh, oh, you don't. You internalize or you process it on your own? It's just, no, I'm, I'm upset then I distract myself kind of a, okay. you know? Like as opposed to, as opposed to, let's all hate her together or like a- Yeah, yeah no, I, I, okay, I don't think the goal is to like, let's all hate on my, yeah, my partner yeah, yeah. because, yeah. you know, he or she is being like this way. I don't mm -hmm. think that's the, the point. It's more of like, I just need some perspective on mm. how, right. to, how to deal with the situation. Mm. And I feel like you should never, make your partner look Bad. like a shit person. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, okay, we can disagree about something in that moment, but it's not to say like, I'm going to slam my partner and say like, oh, what a bitch or whatever, mm. you know, like that kind of stuff. I think that is disrespectful. No, that's actually where I think it's quite, talking to friends about such things is quite interesting because yeah. I find that as I am saying certain things, right, I am in a sense self-rationalizing because I then start to think, okay, so where did I go wrong in this? And then I will like disclaimer, okay, but I did say this, yeah. you yeah. know, but still the situation is like that. Yeah. So how? But you, but you might feel like slightly better about yourself because now you have this sounding board. I think it really depends on the context because like there was one time I got into a heated like fight with my wife was because at the time we were boyfriend and girlfriend was because I'm literally having the argument with her mm. and then like she just wanted to cool down. So I thought like, okay, like, we're just gonna go a cool down like session, right? Mm. So I'm just like staring into blank space. She's furiously typing. <laughs> and so I know like, okay, like, she's, she's talking to her friends about it. Right? <laughs> then, I, I try to bring it up, I'm like, why why you shitting yeah. on me with your friend? She's not voice recording you, say that again. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then I realized that actually, um, what she told me was that, and she showed me also a like, receipt, that her friends were actually being very reasonable and saying that, you know, Dan has a point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like you are the asshole, right? Yeah, yeah. and then I go, yeah. actually talk to your friends more. <laughs> like, I think that's fine. <laughs> no, it's true. Like, I think your real, true inner circle friends, mm. like yeah. know you too well, and they will call you on your bullshit, like if they ever need to, you know? Exactly. And they'll, like really ground you. Yeah. But having like, so so you've lived with Jeremy for a while and you've also hosted Men Explain uh, for a while as well. What is probably one key thing that you've learned about men after all this, all this while? 
Um, I would say men are quite simple creatures. We are cavemen. We are really cavemen. Which means no every episode of Men Explained actually yeah. is the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay, no, so y'all don't think. You know, you know it's, it's very interesting because sometimes when we have conversations right on all these episodes that we've ever had, they actually feel very enlightened sometimes. Like when we have this conversation, they're yeah. like, oh, this is what my wife was saying. Or right. oh, this is what my girlfriend meant. Like, you know, or whatever it is. But I also <laughs> learned, I also learned that sometimes as, as a woman, I also tend to really overthink in different ways. Mm. Like maybe, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I do get very emotional about some things. Mm. And, and that, is, that is something that I don't, I don't deny. Like mm. in an argument, I can definitely get very emotional. Mm. But a lot of men, uh, maybe most men, I don't know, some. <laughs> let's yeah. let's, 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 it's I okay to generalize. <laughs> don't let the world tell you it's wrong. I don't know at all. Yeah. Um, at least from my own experiences. So according to Jeremy, let's yes. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> He's able. I'm talking about Jeremy now. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, One man. Okay, we narrow down. <laughs> is able to look at things from a very, from a very calm and collected standpoint. Mm. At least for him. Mm. And I think I learned a lot from him because... <laughs> we started yeah, from we most started guys. From guys <laughs> yeah. We went from four billion. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Only Jeremy. Is yeah. Come and collect it. No, yeah. <laughs> the rest of us losing our it's shit. True. Let me, so let me give you an example, okay. okay? And the example is sometimes we when we get into these super heated arguments, it usually starts out from nothing and then it becomes some big thing. Uh, mm, we don't even yeah. know what we argued about after that. But he will then actually look back and say, okay, what can I do to make this better? Or like, what can I do to help you Whoa, in this situation? Introspective and helpful man. Yeah. I thought so, everything else. So to me, I'm like, oh wow, that's actually not what I thought because in in my angry state of mind, I'm just like, you fix it. Like you're the problem, blah, blah, blah. Mm, yeah. He's like, okay, give me a moment, think. And he'll be like, okay, I acknowledge that this just happened, but what can I do to make you feel better now? Wow. And I'm like, then obviously I'll cry, right? Because yeah. I feel so bad. Because now I feel like a bitch. Ob- obviously <laughs> I will cry. Obviously I will yeah. cry. <laughs> now I feel like a horrible person because I, I didn't even think of that like right. initially, you know? What a great tactic. He's a master tactician. I feel like I tried this on pair. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like... What did she say? But because it's more like a, if I say that you do, it doesn't count, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, true. Yeah. Which means oh, there's been a I need to I need to first read your mind and anticipate what you need and then deliver. True. Wow, yeah. This is tough, man. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, Don't know how I mean, the first time Jeremy met your dad was by accident. Yeah. What was the actual, like, meet the parents like? It was good. It was good. They really liked him. Um, I think they just want someone who can take care of me mm. and who's responsible. And he kind of, gives that vibe. It's exactly that. But you know? because you're so close to your parents, right? You yeah. think if they say, oh, do I, do I him? Ooh. They have voiced some concerns on other people that I've dated before. But to be fair, they never try and impose too much. Like they know that I will just learn on my own journey right. in that mm. sense. Yeah. They kind of nudge you on what to look out for. But, but if, if they ever did, you think you will uh, listen? I will take it with a pinch of salt, I think. But I'm okay. I'm a typical stubborn person. Like I will only <laughs> learn when I experience <laughs> okay, it. Okay, okay. You have to do the falling yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. But based on the track record and, and what's happened, I guess their their read was somewhat right. I guess. Yeah, their read was right. Uh, we did have our obstacles along the way. Right. Yeah. Mm. Of course, as with every couple, mm. there were many times where we almost reconsidered the relationship. You know, and yeah, I'm just glad we didn't end up there. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of spending time with your family, right? You yeah. actually did recently share on your Instagram about your dad's diagnosis. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned it was a cancerous tumor, but was it? Is it cancer? I've never actually talked about this on any show. This is the first time that I'm talking about it. Are you okay too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm okay too. I mean, clearly I posted it about it because it was his birthday, and I asked him whether it was okay to mm-hmm. share. Mm-hmm. And to put things into context, it's not just uh, the tumor. Mm. So this is not going to turn into a anti-smoking campaign, but I'm just <laughs> going to tell you right now, smoking is really bad. Because mm. unfortunately, this is the outcome. Mm. And he actually has another condition called COPD, which is like a pulmonary disease. I'm not sure. That's like a heart thing, is it? No, it's a lung condition. So, oh. okay, to put things in layman's terms, your lungs, healthy lungs, right? Like corals, you know, when you go diving, you see corals. Mm. Um, but in unhealthy lungs, they are basically black or dead. 
Oh, so it's the real? parts of your lung that's not functioning anymore right. is like dead corals basically right. Right. yeah so he has very little healthy lung left due to smoking for, right. for a I long see. time yeah and i mean i don't blame him for it because i know that at that time also like the education on mm. all these things were not as much so mm. yeah. it is very bad because you cannot grow your lungs back mm. like it's not gonna grow back and mm. the only way to fix it is a lung transplant to which he's too old for that oh. because of the risk and the age right. yeah, and I the recovery see. and all that. There's too much risk involved. Yeah. So uh, he's had to go on like oxygen and, you know, he's had to bring it around, which I'm glad there's technology to help with mm. that now. Mm -hmm. But that being said, it is a struggle to see your parent or a loved one struggle to even like walk around yeah. or do simple things, you know, because if you can't breathe, there's no oxygen that's going to your body and right. everything just falls apart. It leads to a lot of mental health issues as well. Yeah. yeah, so it's not just the physical part. It's also mental. It's very much psychological. And on top of that, we found out he had a tumor. So that tumor is on top of this. Oh, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. But the positive news is uh, I've already, I've already like, fried this all out. Like I've really gotten so emotional about it in 2023, so I can now talk about it more in a more, uh, uh, what do you call that? Collected in a more manner. collected manner. Yeah, see, I lost my train of thought. Um, Cause I can't imagine like losing a parent yet mm. with my relationship with them. You know, it's very hard to imagine mm. losing either one of them, honestly. When you found this out last year, right? Was it? Did it change your life a lot? Because I mean, you are busy with the hosting, you have a restaurant and then you are doing all the YouTube shows as well. Like, uh, did it change how you spent your time a lot? Yeah, another good question. Um, Cause- <laughs> I got two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, no, uh, I realized that I was hustling so hard the past mm -hmm. few years that I'm always like, yeah, okay, I'm so busy. Like sometimes I won't reply them. <coughs> like sometimes I'll just see them once a week, you know? And when this happened, I was like, shit. Yeah. I don't know how much time I have left. Like mm. with, I mean, I don't want to say that because I hope that of mm. course he That's still true. has, yeah. of course I still hope he has like, you know, a few more good years mm. of good quality life. A lot life. more good years. Yeah, yeah. A lot more good years, I hope. So I really dug deep and thought about this and I realized, yes, I had to change a lot of my priorities. Um, certain things I will try and say no, like if I really can't, which I had had a problem with saying no last time to work. Cause I'm like, yeah, if there's money to be earned, I do it now, you know? Mm -hmm. But now I try to be a bit more selective. Um, I try to make it a rule. Like if we don't have to shoot on weekends, I will try not to work on the weekends. Cause I want to keep that to my family time or mm -hmm. personal time. And yeah, hug my dog. I don't know, you know, just do therapeutic stuff like that mm. and spend more time with my family. Cause all they want is to be in your vicinity. Like it doesn't mm. even have to be like, we need to go to Michelin star restaurant. Like, no, they just want to come yeah. to my house or like mm. yeah. just sit down, chill, eat, eat bakute, you know, like watch TV, like, just this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I really had to shift my priorities and I no longer brush them off. At least I try not to brush them off on text. Cause sometimes, you know, like you're yeah. really busy and you like don't reply or like be right back and then you never reply. Mm. So I try, oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I try as much as possible to be more responsive cause I never know what's going to happen. And one of my friends told me the last message her dad sent her before he had a heart attack was uh. a text that she didn't reply. And imagine <sighs> like, I cannot live with that. Like yeah. I absolutely cannot live with that. And you never know. Her dad wasn't even like suffering from any terminal illness. Right. Yeah. yeah. So on a brighter note, <laughs> I mean, after all of this, right, what are some things that you have chosen to say yes to, to do in 2024 that you're excited about? Um, I'm saying yes to challenges and to being uncomfortable. I think that's one thing that I highlighted in uh, one of my recent posts. I, I think a lot of us are very comfortable doing what we do mm -hmm. and it might, you know, serve your purpose and serve your lifestyle. Mm. But if you are a person that wants to grow yourself, mm. I think in more ways than one, like you really have to push yourself into the zone of discomfort. But what, what does that look like for someone like you? Because um, your job is already so varied, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You are doing things on a bigger and bigger stage already. Yeah. So what does that look like in terms of what challenges you? So one thing that not plugging my own talk show here, please but plug your <laughs> own, please, please do. Yeah. yeah. So we were where we were running Men Explain for quite some time, for a few years, mm. and we've seen, you know, nice response and success with that. I'm really grateful for a really awesome team that helped build this show. I want an mm. award for it. But thank you, mm. yeah. I wanted to also build something that pushed me even further as a host. Mm. And we wanted to do 
a live talk show with a live audience. Mm. And that is something we've been working on and we actually executed it and built. And I was so grateful that the team believed in it enough to even build a set. Like mm. we have to build a brand new mm. set. We have to invite people down. There's so much logistics involved, like so much logistics. They have to repaint the walls like after every show because there are footprints everywhere. The producer yeah. was sharing with me also because we, um, we did get invited to be on the show. So, so stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah. so Thank you. Not the... us plugging our guest <laughs> appearance. <laughs> this is like, no, please like, support wow, us. We are so many plug. things. Like, yeah. yeah, no, but the audience interaction that everybody got paddled, everybody yeah, participated. Yeah. So, wow. so there's a lot, so there's a lot going yeah. on. Yeah. And I really wanted to challenge myself as a host to see like how big we can grow this mm. and like yeah I don't know have my Jimmy Fallon moment next time yeah, or something yeah, I don't yeah. know like you know just push myself because yeah. like I was getting very comfortable doing Man Explain mm. love the show still but I'm still bringing some of that element into the talk show Yeah. so we, we want to combine them both and then and you realise men don't have much already so we, yeah, we need to <laughs> expand very <laughs> simple very <laughs> 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 simple creatures <laughs> tired we need more content yeah <laughs> So thank you very much for watching today's episode. We've come to a happy end. Like, share and subscribe. And of course, thank you Sonia for joining us. Ooh, thank Do you. follow her, follow Clarity Co. And check us out on her show very, very soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Ciao. Yo. You got drunk tattoo or not? No. Oh. No. no, I've never. Why do I look like I get drunk tattoos? Not at no. 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 I get drunk. No. <laughs> <laughs> she has a tattoo here that is like double vision back though. Yeah. yeah. Capricorn. Oh, that's right. Oh. <laughs> <Where are you? laughs> Makes sense.